after 10 days, uh, whether we reopen or not due to the coronavirus, in which you can imagine, as you probably already know, we will not be reopening, but we are uh, recasting another 10 days out uh, of being closed. And that will actually lead us through Palm Sunday. Uh, so welcome to worship. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, the Holy Gospel for tonight from Mark chapter 14. Glory to you, O Lord. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. 
Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found the disciples sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Dear friends, this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends, will you join me in a word of prayer? Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable now in your sight, O Lord, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So here's the situation. It's Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. If it were an ordinary year, we'd be sitting right here in the sanctuary tonight, taking in this next-to-last Lenten service. Kids would be meeting with their mentors after church is over tonight. The choir would have already rehearsed for the evening. We'd have already had a delicious Lenten supper served by the Hannah Circle. And then, in addition to that, we would be headlong into March Madness basketball games, and in my dreams, I'd certainly be in the lead, heading into the Sweet 16. <laughs> Spring breaks would be happening, and it wouldn't be long that the power of Holy Week and the victory of Easter would give way to plans for confirmations and graduations and even summer. We're not that far away. But here we are on March 25th, 2020, and it is a completely different landscape. Disappointments, I know, are many. We do, though, have to just accept those finally, we must say to each other, and get over them and put them behind us sooner rather than later. There's just nothing we can do about them, so they can't justify any anger or sadness in us for the long haul. Ultimately, everyone, this will be an extraordinary year in our memories, one that we'll obviously never forget. But maybe more palpable right now is our close need for hope. People are asking for hope. So much is still uncertain. The weeks and months ahead are not at all clear. And I think we all, at some level, are scared about how COVID-19 is going to play out. So we indeed do need hope right now. I'm not one, though, to be glib about things. It's just not in my personality, nor am I comfortable offering platitudes or easy answers to cover up real fears that we have. Neither of those is ever sincere or, or helpful. I also am certainly not one to say that people who are afraid have no faith. I heard a pastor just say that again the other day that if you're afraid, you have no faith. It's so wrong. It's not only not biblical, it's just dangerous and wrong. Faith and fear live alongside each other all the time. Some fear is actually healthy and good even. 
So don't ever let anyone tell you that if you are truly a person of faith, you shouldn't have any fear. That's baloney. Fear often shows us instead where specifically we should ask God to enter into our lives in order to hold us and love us and reassure us. And in those times of trusting that God really does come to us when we don't feel like we've got the strength or the faith to muster to go to God, this is exactly the time that hope rises. Hope rises because God, in the center of God's being, raises life out of death and darkness and hopeless times. God raises life victoriously always, always. This is the gospel, that a resurrection happened after a death. So just like those photos that you saw a little bit ago during Holy, 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 at the beginning of our worship today, God always bursts forth new life out of the deadly cold of winter. Life always wins with God. Winter never lasts forever. Hopelessness or fear or despair never lasts forever because God won't let it. Hope rises. Life rises. God raises it for us. This is the lesson of the garden tonight. And the lesson of God's nature and creation that can inspire our own faith and our own confidence. So here's what I want you to do. Place yourself right there right now. Will you? In the, in the garden. In a garden. Okay? Imagine it in your mind's eye. It can be the Garden of Eden, talked about in the Genesis story. Let's go there. The writer describes this garden built for human beings and for life. The trees and the plants are beautiful, the writer says, so that they would inspire beauty and joy in people. And the same trees and plants are also what feed people in that garden and give us life and even knowledge and also discernment between good and evil. All of this is protection and safety for us. So the garden symbolizes all of this, but especially the garden symbolizes a place of safety and of nourishment for our, our bodies and souls. Even imagine now, around you, what parts of God's world out there seem to be garden-like for you? What places make you feel safe? And what places out there nourish you, feed you? Think about it just for a second. As you do, use the gift of imagination God has given to us. To trust that God walks right in those garden places alongside you where you feel safe and find nourishment and beauty that inspires new hope and new faith in you. In the Bible, the garden is safety. And it is a real thin place, closeness between God and us. Now, transfer all this to the Garden of Gethsemane, the other garden in the biblical story tonight from Mark in the Gospel. Jesus goes there, you know, after his Last Supper with his disciples, after Judas has betrayed him to the Roman authorities, and while Jesus is waiting for all of them to come and find him and take him away, Virtually everybody in this story has abandoned Jesus at this point, even his closest friends. Jesus 
goes to the place that makes him feel safe. And that still has beauty in it and promise in it, which reminds him of the hope that he has, that life will always rise because of God, even after what is deadening or ultimately for him deadly. Even in Jesus' anguish, crying out to God the Father, let this cup, this suffering that's ahead, Lord, not touch me yet, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus trusts God's will for life rising after death. Most often, I think we think of God's will as God sending Jesus to death for us. But that really is only the harsh reality of what people thirsted to do to Jesus. It was bloodthirsty. Killing Jesus isn't God's will. God's will is that Jesus wouldn't run away and only live for himself. God's will is that Jesus, and then we also, would pour ourselves out for the sake of others. In fact, in this way, God's will is that all God's glory is found in Jesus' absolutely selfless, outpoured, life-changing love always given for the sake of others. God's will and glory are that Jesus becomes a garden of safety for us. The place where we see divine love that has been poured out for our sake and that has the power to always raise life out of death. God's will and glory is that Jesus himself is our garden, our safety, our beauty, our hope and faith, our new life. So in not running away, but in laying down his life for the sake of others, Jesus takes into himself all our fear, all our moments of our lack of faith, all our rejection of others and even of God, when we've run away from being faithful or from living rightly. And Jesus submits himself trustingly into the will and glory of his Father. His Father is his garden. And there, in the safe embrace of the holy, new life rises after crucifixion. And Christ Jesus is raised from death. And where does this Resurrection happened, by the way, in a garden, of course, in the safety of God, in the beauty of the lilies bursting forth with life, in the new life that both confirms the trust he placed in God's will of life that always rises out of death, and in this new life of his now, that continues to inspire in people like us more hope, more faith, more comfort for all of our difficult times. Maybe this being one of them in our time right now. This is the ongoing death to life lesson of the garden, of our lives here in God's garden of safety, beauty, hope, and new life. So now, where's your garden? Where's that place where you go to reflect? Where you can, with open eyes and all your senses and heart, say to God in faith, all your works shall praise your name in earth and sky and sea, like we sing in holy, holy, holy. 
Where in safety do you seek God and fall into God's safe, loving embrace? Where are you inspired to put your faith in Christ's pattern, the pattern of God's will, that God always brings life out of death and deadening things? Life always rises. Where's your garden? Is it a, is it a run around Murphy Hanrahan? Is it a walk or a bike around Lake Marion? Is it the North Shore? Is it your sunroom or a fireplace or the quiet of your bedroom at night? Is it gazing out the windows as life flourishes again before your very eyes after the earth's winter sleep? Where's your garden? Where hope is born anew. But then, you can't just stop there. The pattern of God's will in Jesus' life and death and resurrection is that we do not run away, especially in our times of greatest fear, and only think about ourselves. God's glory is in bringing life out of deadening things, life always rising, from the times we too pour ourselves out for others, like Jesus did for us, so we can become safety and beauty and hope, a certain type of garden of nourishment and life for someone else. Curiously, hope in the midst of fear rises when we trust the pattern of our Lord and live like him, this death to life lesson for somebody else that we learned and received in God's garden. Life in Christ is life for each other, always, isn't it? Here's our hope. Christ is with us, just as we work to stay close to one another, with all the confidence that life will always rise through Christ and even through us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray to God who promises to hear our prayers. God of creation, maker of gardens, giver of light and love, bloom in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, calm our hearts and conquer our fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healer of the world, Give strength to those who are weak. Give courage and hope to those who are sick, including Phil Brandt and Glenn Klotz. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all this, dear God, and most of all, that you would bind our hearts and hurts of this world to your love. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Dear friends, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will. <laughs>